So today I've come down um, during my dinner hour just to dig a few worms. I'm going to go out tomorrow night, so which is Tuesday night. I'm going to go and fish uh, Breen Down. Well, sorry, Breen Beach. I'm um, just going to obviously have some lugworm baits. Um, I'll probably put one rod out with a, a squid bait for a, for a ray. Um, but I should be mainly just scratching around for flounder, hopefully a sole, and some scooby bass. I don't know if the um, if there's going to be any codling or whiting showing up yet, but we'll give that a go as well. So just for, for digging, just a simple fork. I always bring a big bucket to put the worms in. Then I bring just a normal household sieve. So after I've uh, dug all the worms, I can go to a pool and wash all the worms out so there's no sand left in there. Um, they seem to keep a lot better then if you get rid of all the sand off of them first, keep longer. You can put them in your fridge, um, you can keep them up to a couple of weeks if you're looking after them okay. Um, right, so we'll start some digging and we'll see if we can uh, get a few. So most of you probably know that these are all worm casts. So basically, um, wherever you find a beach where there's loads of worm casts on, you should be fine to dig it. So that I've trampled on them now, but there was a load of worm casts around near the fork. So we'll have a little dig there. Let's see if we can see me. So there's a good point, if you get any that are speared, either if you're going to use them that day, keep them. Um, you can put them on, but don't keep them in the same container. Um, so just discard them. If you've got any that are in clay or sand, just break away at it until you get the worm out. Because um, obviously then you can snap the worms. So we'll have a bit of a dig for a minute and then see what we can come back with. Like I say, always keep your eye, because the worms you've missed will start coming out of the uh, piles. Like I say, always break open the sand, you don't want to tear the worms. Right, also, we'll only um, down a minute. we'll only ever dig enough for the one session. So I'm only going to go out tomorrow night. I'm going to fish the tide three hours up. Um, not quite got enough yet, but just this little hole here. 
I've probably got about 25 worms there. So in less than 10 minutes digging. So I'll, um, I'll dig on for a bit more and get a few, um, get a few worms and then um, hopefully be back with you tomorrow night on the beach at Breen. Oh, oh, actually what I'll do before I finish all this, I'll just show you how I clean all the worms off. Right, so after about 20 minutes of digging, 15, 20 minutes, just find yourself a little pool. Um, I like to grab a handful of the worm and then just, just simplize so I can make it. Takes most of the sand off them, keeps them alive a lot longer. Just grab another load and do the same. I haven't got many worm there, but um, like I say, just for that little bit of digging, just for a, a quick session tomorrow, it be perfect. There you go, so there's probably 30, 35 worm in there. So that'd be perfect for a little session tomorrow. I should probably be just using two up flappers on one rod and like I say, a big squid or something on the other rod. So um, yeah, hopefully we'll be on the beach tomorrow. I could bring you back and we'll see where we go from. So another quick point um, I would like to say, where I am now, there's not many people that come down to this part of the beach so i don't worry about it if i was fishing if i saw if i was digging on western beach itself um then i would backfill all the holes um today i've just done that little hole there and that one there uh, there's plenty of bits that people have been digging over the last couple of days by the looks of it um, but when the tide comes in, it just flattens it straight back out. But yeah, if you're, if you're digging in an area where there's a lot of um, people walking, it's best just to backfill your holes. Just so no one falls, twists their ankle and then stops us digging on those beaches. Right, so first things first. Um, what a difference one day makes. I mean, yesterday I was digging the worm in shorts and t-shirt. Today I've got waterproofs on and a coat. Um, tide's nice and flat today when I woke up this morning it was really windy and I thought I was going to call it off but as the day's gone on the wind's dropped down so I'm going to be chucking the orange rod out with sections of bluey and on the green rod which is um, a new rod it's going to be the first time using it today it's a pen tidal um, I'm going to be putting uh, three hook flappers on that one, three and two hook flappers depending on what I got there. Uh, so the first one I got out is a three hook flapper, two up in one down. So if you're not sure, that's just um, two of the hooks are above the weight and one's just below the weight, and that'd be just one worm on each hook. And uh, we'll get it out there and see what happens. That'd be close in one, and the orange one will be a bit further out for some rays. See how we get on. So what I'm doing at the beginning, the orange rod um, with a bigger bait on, I've cast out. I've had to walk out quite a way, brought it back to the rest. Um, I'm going to wait for the tide to come up a bit, another sort of 60 yards or so before I start bait, uh, casting out with the green rod. And as I said before, that's going to be in close, so that's only going to be like 30 yards out, 20 to 30 yards. 
just scratching with that one. Um, we'll keep this one out for a bit. Uh, when the tide, if I haven't had any bites, when the tide gets up to here, I will wind in anyway and rebait and we cast back out again. And then I will start using the walk back technique on the orange rod. So if you don't know, you just cast it out and then obviously as the tide's coming in, we just leave it out there even leave it out there up to an hour just keep walking backwards and backwards until you either get a bite or you run out of line on your reel so as you can see we've got both rods out now um, I'm gonna have to the green one's only been out for about five minutes and already I'm gonna have to start moving back there's a few pull downs on the orange rod but it could just be weed I'm saying that it's a very big tide and there's very little weed out there usually you see bits of weed you can't really see much it's so calm so I shall be moving it back in a minute and then after we've moved it back um, we'll probably bring the orange one in for a rebate up because that would have been out there for about 20 minutes I suppose then As I say, a lovely evening and we've got the whole beach. The whole beach to myself. Not even a dog walker out here. So it's the second cast on the enclosed rod. Um, it is coming in stripped each time. Now, I think there is a lot of shrimp out there, but I have had a couple of knocks as well. So if it's flounder, I might not be leaving it long enough. So I'm gonna, if I get a knock next time, I'll leave it a bit longer. So just a little lob out with the enclosed rod, rebait it up. Let's hope something happens this time. Thanks. Um, let you make your own mind up on this one.
So believe it or not, we've actually got... Oh! The shrimp has just dropped off. I've had a white in. I've got a white in. First one of the season. Shame something bigger didn't come along and grab it, but there you go. That's probably what's been nicking my bait. So, uh, oh, we'll get a fresh bait out there, see if we can get a bigger one. So as you can see, we've only got the green rod out at the moment. Uh, bait is actually coming in about every sort of five to eight minutes and it's sort of stripped. So um, all I'm going to do now is keep fishing this one, changing the baits about every eight minutes. Um, let's say rebaiting up, getting it back out there until I run out of worm now. So whether that just gives me I'm not sure, I'll probably, I'll probably still get about another 45 minutes out of it, hopefully. And hopefully we get sunk a little bit bigger than that last one. Another little white in, don't know if you can see that, another little white in. I've got a headlight on me. So another little white in, so whether well that's what it's on book in a minute. So lovely, Mr. Bass come along I think and probably took the white in rather than the lug bait but right um, I'm sorry but that one's not going back that's going to be for my dad for his tea obviously tomorrow night now but yeah let's get another bait out and see if we can get another one so hopefully uh, that fish come out I'll only see when I look back later um, I just weighed it it's three pound two, so uh, not a bad one. Uh, obviously, there's bigger out there, and there's a lot smaller out there, but a nice eating size anyway. So, uh, like I say, it's probably nearly time for me to. I just took a few photos in that, so it's nearly time for me to change bait again. But, um, I haven't been keeping an eye on my rod then, so I've just been taking photos and weighing it and stuff like that. So, uh, let's see what happens. Baits are absolutely stripped, so we'll just go down to five minutes now. Right, so this is the last cast now. Um, I will bring you back if I get anything on this one, otherwise we'll catch you on the next one. Um, so today's video really was obviously yesterday going to dig bait. Um, just to, to make it a real cheap fishing session really. So that was obviously just a bit of time, it didn't cost anything. Um, I did have some leftover bluey which has been frozen before that obviously didn't work tonight but I didn't give that much of a go only a little bit um, and then started trying to concentrate just on the one rod for the scratching um, so yeah so that's the last bit of bait on there now I've doubled up on each hook with two worms on each it's probably about 10 minutes off the top of the tide so I'll leave back to the top of the tide pack up and that'll be it and yeah we'll see you on the next one